Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue on with a couple of the other videos that we've done in the past. You know, one of them being the air grid heater and the other one being the whole controversy about dilution and contamination of your engine oil. So we have another issue on this one where the air grid heater didn't fail but its inherent design failed the engine you'll understand more as we go on this okay so what is the air grid heater um it's what preheats the air charge going in the engine on cold startups basic simple it's an epa thing it does help aid when it's in the super cold climate but you can also plug in your truck and help with that now the air grid heater has a series of grids that <coughs> excuse me that uh use electricity to heat up the surrounding area from the heater itself and the intake air charge now what i'm about to show you is an air grid heater that has almost 100 percent plugged off and then we're going to talk about what causes this so without further ado here she is now as you can see this one is really really bad this one came out of a 20 23 ram 2500 and there was a couple other underlying issues as a continuation of diagnosis. We had excessive EGR flow codes and we found that the EGR valve internal tumbler had rotated. That's also been a problem. There was a series of those EGR valves we had to replace. It was just a left and right thing right after they released out. So we get that problem taken care of and then on the test drive the vehicle has no power and throws po402 excessive egr flow again now this time we were able to actually hear the EG, egr valves cycling on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off just sitting there in an idle it sounded like almost somebody tapping on metal like this It was pretty interesting. Now, let's talk about what causes this specific to this vehicle. What causes this to plug up as bad as it did. Now, you get a lot of people out there that like to take their vehicles into the fast lube place down on the corner because it's convenient. The problem with doing that with a diesel is you do not get the oil drain time that's required by Stellantis to drain all the oil out of the engine. I'm gonna show you a little quick excerpt out of our service information. They have removed the part where it tells you how long to drain the engine oil, but it does how, tell you how long you need to let it sit before you check your oil, which is a good indication of how long you need to let it sit to drain your oil. So here we go. Right here, you can see where it says Stop the engine, wait 30 minutes to allow the oil to drain back to the pan and check the level again. Now here's why that's important. These are big engines. Lots of passages inside. Lots of surface area that you have to let that oil drain back to the oil pan on. The problem we have with that is you go to your quick lubes, even when you go to a dealer and you go to the express lane to have your oil changed, they're trying to get them in as fast as possible. So you're lucky to get a 10 minute drain on these things. How do I personally do it? Well, most of these oil changes come with a rotate. First thing I do is lift up the vehicle and I pull the drain plug. Then I start my inspection. Go through and do the everything underneath. You know, checking the brakes, checking the differentials, checking for any oil leaks, fuel leaks, coolant leaks, so on and so forth and then rotate the tires after i get my tires rotated the oil filter changed we're ready to uh start considering putting the drain plug back in 
this depends on how long this whole process has taken me. If it has to wait for another 15 minutes, then it waits. I do not skimp on the time. I've got other vehicles I can work on, start diagnosing or whatever in the process of while I'm getting at least a 30 minute drain on that oil. So once you do get your oil drain and your drain plug back in, drop it back down. I don't put the full three gallons of oil back into these things. I put about two and a half gallons in. And then I start it. Shut it off and let it wait again before you check the oil. Why is this so important? Making sure that you do not overfill these crankcases. Well, along with the PO402 EGR flow code that this one exhibited, we also had a DPF regen frequency code. And some of you guys that have these diesels are very familiar with that code as well. When you overfill these engines, a lot of that oil goes right back up through the CCV, which doesn't capture it all, and dumps it right back into the intake of the turbo. When you get that oil that goes into the intake of the turbo, spins around, goes through the intercooler, around the other side, and right back up through the throttle body and into the intake manifold. And that oil sticks to every surface that it comes in contact with. Every one of these trucks that we see with the regen frequency code or the PO402 EGR excessive flow code, we pull the dipstick and we find that every one of them is over full. This one just happened to be a half a gallon over full. So we also do an oil change. Now, not all the time is it over full because of the, the oil change procedure not being followed correctly. Some of it is because of that regen frequency code. Now, every time these things regen, fuel will make its way down into the crankcase and give you the dilution that we've talked about before in other videos. So the oil dilution, oil contamination part of this whole scenario comes into, into play. Now, with that being said, it just compounds the problem. Too much oil in the crankcase, or too much oil fuel mix in the crankcase, ends up going back through the intake and collecting onto the grid heater and all of the other surfaces as well. In fact, one of the service procedures for one of these codes is to clean the CAC, the, the charge air cooler. We have to run a, a chemical through there flush it out with water blah 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 it's a pain in pain in the butt but part of the procedure we have to get all that oil out of there because oil going back through into your engine on the intake side is not good you're going to compound your problems with air grid heaters plugging up with the dpfs getting burned out dpf region region frequency codes all of that stuff it's just it's a very bad deal all the way around the first step in all of this is getting a full drain on your oil and then making sure that you don't overfill it when you do go back. On a Cummins engine, when you pull the drain plug and it slows down to a drip, there's usually about a cup of oil left in the bottom of the oil pan. It's not like a, a Chevy Duramax where there's still a good quart left in the bottom of that oil pan it's not as drastic but you do have that drain plug box inside of the pan that prevents all of the oil from coming out now the oil the engine is designed to only have three gallons of oil in it so you have to compensate for some of those other factors all right now i really want to touch base back onto this oil dilution problem that we've talked about before and we're going to talk about it again i did have some comments in in there that state that I'm not a petroleum engineer. No, I'm not a petroleum engineer. In fact, I don't know how many petroleum engineers actually deal with oil at this level. But I will tell you this, when I take black diesel engine oil that I drain from an engine, I put it between my fingers and it feels almost like sandpaper in there with very little lubricity. You cannot tell me that that oil is still good for another five, 10,000 miles as recommended from the oil manu the vehicle manufacturers for oil change intervals at 15,000 miles. It's not gonna happen. You're doing damage to your engine by allowing that 
contaminated and diluted oil to remain in your engine. You have to bump these intervals up. And I really don't care what a lot of these people say about, nope, I run mine 15,000 anyway, or 25,000. I've had, I don't know how many comments of people running their oil 25,000 and they only change their filter. It's, it does not make sense, does not compute into my brain. Have they ever even felt their oil compared to brand new oil? I highly doubt it. They just think they know it all because somebody else taught them that this was the process and this is what needs to be done. These modern engines can't handle this like they did back in the day. Back in the day, and how many Chevy 350s did you come across and the insides of them look like a <laughs> the bottom of a used oil tank after it's been drained? They're terrible. You know, those engines were never clean on the inside. These engines today, the tolerances are so tight, they cannot handle that. They will literally grenade themselves. So no, it doesn't take a petroleum engineer or an expert in petroleum engineering to tell you that the lubricity of your oil has diminished from contamination and dilution. All you need are some fingers and the ability to touch it. Do that sometimes before you open up your mouth and make a stupid comment because any mechanic will tell you that you can feel the difference between brand new oil and oil that's been in there for 10, 15, 20,000 miles. So oil change interval is key. You want your engine to last. You want your investment in your vehicle to last, especially with the cost of these new ones that are coming up that are way over $100,000. You can buy oil plan packages pretty much wherever you change your oil so that you're not paying a crap load of money out of pocket. If you do decide to change your own oil at home, make sure you keep all of your receipts that are time stamped and date stamped and write down the mileage on those receipts so that if you do come across an issue where you have to have warranty work done, you can prove your maintenance records. I guarantee if you cannot prove your maintenance records, Stellantis will not warranty out your engine. It's a, it's a restricted part, even on a customer pay basis. It's a restricted part, so you have to do that. And, you know, the other thing is, is just common sense. Take it back to the funny things that you see, especially if you're, if you, anybody actually ever does read their, their owner's manual, you know, you go back into the fifties and sixties and stuff like that, where they actually taught you how to set your, your dwell and your spark plug gap. Now they tell you not to drink the antifreeze. Stupid people, stupid things changes the way that society looks at stuff right now we're getting off topic we do want to prevent stuff like this from happening with this i mean that's just nasty man i don't care how many different ways you look at it look at this it's just absolutely disgusting and this could have been prevented that's the other sad part that right there could have been prevented but anyway as usual i want to thank everybody for watching the videos you know we go through a lot of effort to try and bring you good content we try and make sure that from my point of view you're getting the information as accurate as i can give it to you and i'm always open to criticism just make sure it's valid if you're gonna come at me i will come back with guns blazing so anyway <laughs> I want you guys to have a good day, have a good weekend, and we'll talk to you later.